give us an opportunity to, you know, get some guys some opportunities to go out there and play. I thought it was really important. And then obviously um, to give some of our veteran experienced players an opportunity to rest towards the end of that game and come out of it injury free. So I thought we handled it uh, exactly how I would have hoped. Um, obviously within the game, um, you know, defensively we played really well. Uh, I thought we handled and controlled the flow of the game really well, played well on third down, played well in the past game. Um, just thought we did a really, really complete job on defense. Offensively, um, you know, didn't think we ran the ball as well as we're capable of. I thought that was obviously something that, that we're going to need to address this week and make sure we clean up, um, need to sustain blocks a little bit more, need to control the line of scrimmage a little bit better than we did. Uh, thought we were able to get the passing game going, uh, you know, on a wet, windy, day, um, you know, which is always a challenge, but I thought we were able to execute in the passing game. And, um, you know, we kind of anticipated we would need to do that a little bit. I wish we wouldn't have had to do it so much, um, but, you know, we did it to the level we needed to to win the game. And then, you know, I thought on special teams, we continue to play really well. You know, for Todd to go out there and kick a 50-yard field goal was really big. Uh, for us to make the field goal at the end of the half after the two-minute drill, I thought was really important. Um, Porter Wilson, who's probably not being talked about enough right now, continues to punt the ball uh, at a really high level um, and so I think we're uh, in the top five now nationally in net punt uh, which is you know a critical stat when you talk about control and field position and then we were able to get the punt return game going and we had a lot of guys do a really good job of making making blocks and getting on people I was kind of joking with Calhoun this morning I think he averaged about 18 yards a return I told him I think I could averaged about 12 and so um, you know he did a good job but I thought the kids blocking for him did a really good job this weekend uh, in terms of our players of the game, uh, just so you guys have that information uh, from a scout team perspective, uh, our offensive scout team player of the week was Caleb Doris. Uh, our defensive player was River Hansen, and our special teams player was Dawson Andrews. thought those guys did a really good job for us last week. Uh, our lineman of the game on offense was Graham Barton. thought he was the standout player on our offensive line. And then defensively, Ryan Smith uh, making the critical play that, that led to the, the scoop and score from Dwayne Carter, which obviously I think put the game away in the second half. Uh, and then our players of the week, offensively, Jordan Moore, uh, you know, did a really nice job in the past game, became a really viable target for us and just continues to get better every week. Uh, Nias Peebles on defense, I thought, really showed up and had a huge day. Um, you were starting to rely on him a lot more now on third down, and, and he was able to deliver with a sack and a half and really got some pressure and made a couple of TFLs in the run game. Uh, and then on special teams, James Hobson, I thought, had a tremendous day. I thought um, did a really good job in coverage, uh, kind of got thrust in a little bit in the punt game, uh, made a play on kickoff inside the 20-yard line. And so um, some of those unsung plays that maybe you don't see or don't get noticed I thought he did a phenomenal job with that and so um, now it's on to, to next week you know and obviously uh, a challenging team you know Notre Dame got a ton of respect for that program got a lot of respect for Marcus Freeman and the job that he does um, you know this is a complete football team for sure I, I think offensively you know it starts with the offensive line you know it's it's going to be the biggest offensive line that we've played against um, they're massive um, the left tackle Joe Alt is, is phenomenal he's a big human being um, but across the board all all of those guys, they're very well coached. They know what they're trying to do and execute in the run game, and they're able to create holes for, you know, a stable of backs. You know, it starts with esteem, but really they roll through four guys in the backfield, and I think all of them are extremely talented. Um, you know, we're very familiar with Sam and who he is as a quarterback and what he's capable of doing, and so, you know, nothing but respect for how he plays the game, and he certainly has elevated his game as he's gotten into a new offense and become a leader of that program, and you know, and then they got skill kids all over the place that are tall and, and can run and make plays. And so, you know, it's going to be a challenge on offense for us to go out there and match what they're capable of. And then, you know, defensively, they're playing at an elite level. I think the way they're playing defense right now um, is phenomenal. I think they're pressuring the quarterback. They're setting edges in the run game. They're not allowing people to run the ball. They're suffocating in coverage. Uh, their second level is extremely athletic and runs uh, and makes a ton of plays. And so um, it's a very good football team coming in here Saturday night. And, you know, we've got to have a great week of preparation to get ourselves ready to go out and play our style of football. Um, but it should be a great stage Saturday night. So excited for it. So from there, I'll open up to questions. Mike, in the, going into the Clemson game, you were a little concerned or just didn't know how the team would respond to being on that stage, how much 
more at peace are you with them having been on this stage before going into this one? Uh, yeah, a little. You know, I, I, we still don't have the the volume of it that the teams that we're playing on this stage do, and so that's that's still probably an area that that concerns us. You know, first time hosting game day with all the noise and the buzz that's around that. Um, you know, I told the guys this morning. You know, we're getting a lot of congratulations for game day coming here. I, I'd rather wait and get some congratulations for how we play a football game Saturday night and um, just trying to stay focused on the task at hand, right? And that's going out and having really good practices and getting the game plan down and knowing what we're trying to execute and knowing the things that are going to be important for us to go out and have success on Saturday. And so um, I'm obviously more comfortable because we've been through it before, but, um, you know, it's still not something that happens around here all the time. And so still a little bit of a concern. Do you try to insulate the guys from it or do you try to get them to embrace it? Yeah, I mean, in this day and age, you can't insulate them, you know, aside from locking them in a closet somewhere. So it's not necessarily about insulating. It's just more about educating. Um, and, and we have smart kids, right? So I'm not – it's not that I'm worried about it. It's not like we have an overconfident group or a big-headed group. It's just kind of educating them on how to get through the week, right? Sometimes you get into games like this and kids start thinking about the plays that they're going to make and how they're going to – you know, show out on Saturday and how they're going to deliver and all the attention that's going to come with it. And they don't focus on all those little details that go into their ability to actually make those plays. And so just trying to keep them educated on what it's going to take. It's going to take four really good practices. It started this morning. Um, it's going to take a really good walkthrough on Friday. It's going to take great preparation in the hotel, uh, great pregame. You know, it's going to take all of those things for us to come out and play football the way we're capable of it. Is there any concern, Coach, or what you just mentioned before, not being in this type of environment before, but getting the players ready, staying consistent, staying humble, ready for this big moment, knowing that you all haven't been in less, you know, this type of situation coming up Saturday against Notre Dame? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I would use the word humble. I mean, we're a humble group. I, I think the biggest thing is getting them to understand that they should be confident in their preparation, confident in how they've trained, confident in the things they've done to put themselves in this position. Um, and then understand the, the work it's going to take this week uh, for them to go out and have a chance to have success on Saturday. And, and, I, and I think they understand it. I don't think they don't understand it. Um, you know, we'll just continue with that messaging all week and, and try to get them ready for Saturday night. Coach, how are you handling all the uh, success and the attention that is coming your way? Because this is new territory for you, too, you know, being a first-time head coach and just seeing how your success is, you know, growing nationally and you're getting that type of attention. And, you know, the second part of that question is you have to keep an even keel for your program so they don't, you know, get a big head or whatever. So how, how are you handling that and how is your team kind of like following your lead to stay even keel? Yeah, I think my ability to stay even keel is very good. I think I've shown you guys that since I've gotten here. Um, no, I, listen, you get into coaching and you realize very quickly that you're either the hero or the GOAT depending on what happens on Saturday. And so, um, you know, for all the time that I spent on a defensive court as a defensive coordinator, um, certainly wasn't my program. I certainly wasn't, wasn't the face of the program, but you live the same life as a defensive coordinator where you can be, you know, a genius on Saturday and an idiot the next weekend, right? And that's just the nature of coaching and it just comes with it. And so um, I try to maintain a level head. I understand and appreciate all the praise. I certainly appreciate the, the rec recognition that our program is getting. Uh, I told our kids this morning, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited for them that people are starting to recognize the work that they've put into this thing uh, and that that's starting to get acknowledged on a national stage because they certainly have earned it and they deserve it. Um, but I also know how fleeting all of this is, and so that's what keeps me grounded, and that's what the messaging is to those guys is to stay grounded and just continue to be humble and work, and that's what we try to do. Mike, can I ask you to circle back to special teams for a little bit? We focus on the specialists, but the other nine, ten guys out there, Dukes, had great coverage on kicks this year. Uh, is that on paper, Duke might have an advantage on special teams over Notre Dame? Can you just talk a little bit more about how good your special teams have been? and how you can leverage that Saturday? Yeah, I mean, it's something we spend an awful lot of time talking about. It's certainly something we practice at a really high level. I think Coach Dougherty does a phenomenal job preparing and organizing our special teams. Um, and then we've got great buy-in, you know, and we were actually just talking about this last week. Like, the, I think one of the best examples that's happened this year is you look at a kid like Josh Pickett, 
and and Josh Pickett comes in and he started games last year at corner for us and he competed to be a starting corner this year and you know maybe didn't win the battle the way he had hoped or wasn't getting the reps at corner the way he has hoped and he's gone out there and started on all four units all four games and had a major impact on us winning football games on special teams and you know Cam Bergeron's like that James Hobson's like that um, you could, then you got like starters running around you know Jalen Stinson goes out there on punt return this week and you know he takes the left tackle and he drives them. 18 yards into the sideline um, to open up a lane, you know what I mean? And that's a starting safety going out there, buying into what we're trying to do on special teams. And so I just think we've got really good buy-in. I think we're doing a really good job coaching it. Um, and I think our kids are going out and executing. And, you know, in terms of having an advantage, we only have an advantage if we go out and execute the way we're capable of. And so we've just got to continue to do the things that we're doing um, and use that to our advantage Saturday. Talk about buy-in, yeah, I believe you had a kick who make a tackle. Yeah, yeah, no, that was, I, I tell you what, that was, that was a neat little reverse that they ran, and, and that was not something, um, you know, <laughs> one of the things we do is we spend an awful, we go do some deep dives in special teams to make sure we see everything we can see, and that was not one that we had seen, and, and they did a, a really good job, and I think Charlie really saved that from being an explosive play and, and was able to go throw his body around. It's the second time he did that. If you remember last year against Virginia, he did the same thing and caused the fumble uh, on a return that was going to get out. And so, um, yeah, he's a very athletic kid, and so it helps us having him back there. Coach, the last three weeks in the second half, been able to rotate and really see some depth. How important is that leading up to a game like this and even for the rest of the season, not only for the young guys to get the playing time, but also for – your ones to maybe catch their breath in the first month of the season. Yeah, I think both of it. I think one, it, it like we talk about it in three phases. I think there's three phases that have happened at the end of those games. One is is being able to get your starters out, which is important because you know the less wear and tear you can put on their body uh, in the midst of a 12 game season, and um, we certainly have a heck of a run coming up now over the next eight games. Um, so the fresher you can be going into that, the better it is for sure. So that's the starting point. Then the next thing is, um, you know, we talk about like the one and a half, right? That next kid in at each position and, and you don't know exactly which one it is, but you know, of that whole group, um, someone's going to be out there, probably four or five of them at some point are going to be out there and have to execute at a really high level um, for us to win football games, whether that's a Peyton Jones, whether that's a Henry Bielen, whether that's a Jeremiah Hazley, whether that's a Cam Bergeron, like whoever it is, go down position by position. Um, and so for those guys to get game reps, I think is really important, and and so that part of it is really good. And then when you when you're able to win like we have, then you're also getting you know the the third stringers in, which is a lot of those freshmen, you know, and to get Samaj Turner reps and be able to utilize his four games, and David Anderson reps and be able to utilize his four games, you know, that's not even something we were able to do last year. Um, and that's you know those are great opportunities for kids to you know take advantage of this four game red shirt rule because you know those are not guys you can play on special teams um, you can't get the you know we'll be able to rotate all of our freshmen through on special teams in different games throughout the year but for some of those linemen um, who don't get that opportunity unless you get into those types of games that's just great experience we got Kamari Robinson out there at corner like that those things are huge uh, for the future development of our program. Mike, how do you balance the uh, what moment like this weekend means to Duke historically as a program with the expectations that I'm sure you have for this program you know, since you got here and moving forward? Yeah, it, you know, it, it's interesting. You know, we <laughs> – I want to make sure I say this the right way. Like we had a ton of confidence in what Duke football could be. That's why I took the job. I did not take the job with the hope and expectation that we could be a middle of the road program. That's not why I came here. Um, that's not why I left my previous destination. Like that's not who I am. That's not really how I'm wired. Um, did I anticipate uh, in game five of year two? that we would be on this stage? No, of course not. You know, and that's a credit to our kids. And that's really all it is. It's a credit to our kids and what they've bought into and how hard they've worked and how much they've put into this thing to make this what this has become as quickly as it's become. And, and so um, they get all of the credit for that. And so, um, you know, I think what it's doing is it's allowing us to expedite the process of building the brand of Duke football to the level that we hoped it could get to. Um, and again, we talked about that validation word, right? That validation of all of the things that we're capable of, all of the things that we're doing internally, all of the things that we believe in inside our building um, that don't mean a whole lot to the general public or to the national 
landscape if we don't deliver um, the way we have been able to deliver on the field. And, and obviously that's something that just needs to continue for this thing to continue to grow at the level it's capable of growing. You guys had a busy day in the passing game on Saturday. Um, what's your assessment of how that went and how kind of sets you up for the rest of the season to see him you know, throw the ball that much? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know about set us up. We, you know, we have a lot of confidence in Riley throwing the football. We have three really talented wide receivers. Um, our tight ends can get open. We can get the running backs involved in the passing game. Um, we just haven't had to much, right? And so if you don't have to, we're certainly not going to. You know, We're not going to just do things for the sake of doing things. And, and the way they were going to play defense, uh, and obviously with us having had back-to-back 200 yards rushing, like we knew that was the type of day it was going to be. Um, the strength of their entire program was their front six. And so um, we knew we were going to have to throw it, and it was just great to be able to go out there and do it in a game situation. But um, we knew that was going to come up at some point. We certainly... Uh, have talked a lot about that internally going into this year, playing the increased schedule, playing more better competition. Um, when you play those types of games, you have to be balanced. We're not going to be able to just go out there and run the football only uh, and have success and win football games. And so we've got a lot of confidence, but it was good to go out there and execute it. Mike, when you came in, you guys had a big rebuild. Confidence, competitive edge, all these elements to the team. From your defensive coordinator history, when you came in and looked at where you guys were defensively, what did you immediately say, like, this is the most important thing defensively. We've got to get done as quickly as possible. Um, there's so many things. You know, I, I think, and, and I've done this a lot as a defensive coordinator, I think the first thing that just jumps out is fundamentals. Um, like, like, you start to try to instill the fundamentals of how you believe defense should be played. And, and that's not to, to slight anyone who was here in the past or anything like that. I just... Everywhere I've been, that's always kind of been the first thought process is, is we believe in a certain way of how we play football, how we attack the football, how we tackle, how we block destruct, how we leverage the ball, how hard we play. Like those have been staples of, of what we believe in on defense everywhere I've ever been. And so I think it just starts with that. I think it starts with a mindset and an attitude. And then, um, and we talked about this a lot last year, just we play defense a lot different. Um, than, than maybe what they've done in the past. And so just, again, not right or wrong, just a lot different. And so just trying to get all of that instilled and, and what that looks like and how we execute that and how we communicate and the things that we need to do. Um, you know, and then it's been great getting Tyler in. And, and honestly, he deserves all of the credit for what's going on in our defense this year, him and our defensive staff, because, um, you know, I, I help a little, but it's really them. They're running the whole thing. He's calling the whole game. And um, I think they've just elevated this thing to a whole new level. There's been a lot of people talk about physicality with you guys defensively, you know, especially the Clemson game that really stood out to them a little bit. How much, how important was that part too? the idea of having a tough and physical defense that, you know, we're at least bringing more of that out of them. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't play football without being physical. You know, if you look at who has won, not who has generated media buzz, not who has scored a lot of points, but if you look at who has won football games over the years, um, it's teams that play physical. It's teams that, that, you know, punish you. It's teams that play extremely hard. Um, that's the recipe, right? If you look at the teams that have won the last handful of national championships, that's what you would say. They have physical, imposing defenses. They can run the ball. They can execute in the passing game when they need to and when they want to, right? But but they're based off of physicality. Um, you know, you don't see a lot of teams winning the national championship running spread offenses. You don't see a lot of teams winning national championships um, scoring 50 a game and giving up 40 a game. Um, those teams create headlines, and those teams are fun to watch, but that's not the teams right now that are winning championships. I was going to say, too, that the rules and everything is so offensive-driven in today's game and what people want to see, but you guys have given up five touchdowns on the season. I think you're only one of six to do five or fewer. How difficult – is something like that to do in today's game? And is there a thing you can point to and say this is the biggest reason why with this group we've been able to keep teams out of the end zone? No, I mean, I think we're on the same page. I think we're playing well. I, I still think there's a lot of room for growth. And so I, I've, I've said that before. You know, we're we're very critical of everything. And so as, as we see it from a coach's eye, um, you know, we know the stretch that we have coming. 
and and this is going to be the stretch that defines who and what we're about and so that's not just this game that's really the next eight and so um you know we're off to a good start but we're a third of the way through so let's let's have those conversations down the line sometime going back to riley both you and kevin john said in the preseason that you hope to get to the chapter two of the playbook do you feel like you're there and you guys yet to throw an interception do you feel like you guys have kind of <laughs> Do you feel like you guys have dialed dial him back a little bit in his aggressiveness? Today? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I don't. Riley's been really good with the football since we've been here. I, I think that's that's one thing. He understands the value of the ball. And, and um, you know, there's, there's <clears throat> you know, kids who just get that, right? There's kids who, who you can say that to and you can teach that to and you can go over and over and over and they just don't understand it and they put the ball at risk a lot. Um, I think Riley understands it, and, and we've been we've been very documented in how we present that to the team, and I think he's taken it and understands it, and so I think he's very understanding of the value of a five yard scramble versus throwing a fifty fifty ball into tight coverage, right? And and those things matter from a game management standpoint. Um, but we also knew going into this year that we were going to have to be able to execute a higher efficiency passing game. And, and I think we've been able to do that. It hasn't shown up in these big monstrous stats because we haven't needed it like that. But, you know, I think over the last three games he's completing, it's got to be something like 75% of his passes. And so we've been extremely efficient operating and executing in the throw game. And that's something that as we get into the meat of this schedule is going to need to continue for us to be successful. Coach, on the flip side of that, Sam Hartman also <clears throat> I'm not knocking on wood about that. <laughs> you always talk about winning the turnover margin, whatever way it comes. What, does, what challenge does that present to your capacity Yeah. You know him really well, but what does that do for you guys going into it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the weird part of college football now is you've got some guys, and we certainly have a bunch of them too, but just have a ton of experience, right? And Sam's got a ton of college football experience. I don't know how many games he started, but I imagine it's got to be close to 50-something. Um, you know, and so he's – He's, there's not a lot you can throw at him that he hasn't seen before, and, and we kind of saw that going into the game last year, and so that's only gotten better now that he's he's gotten around a different group of coaches that can teach him different ways of looking at things and seeing things and kind of enhancing his knowledge in and around the game. And so, um, yeah, you know, I wish we were playing a true freshman quarterback making his first start, but that's not what we have. And so, um, you know, we've got to do some different things to try to make him uncomfortable and try to figure out ways to, to not make it real easy for him and at least challenge him and not allow him to have success uh, as often as he would like. And then we've got to attack the football like we always do. And then in a game like this, it probably becomes more important that you protect it. You know, and, and winning the turnover battle, we always talk about it as a two-way street. If you don't turn the ball over, you can't lose it. Um, and so, you know, in a game when you know you're playing against a team that's got an experienced quarterback that's not going to put the ball at risk, that has been very intentive about all that stuff, you know, you know your margin on offense is a lot smaller because you got to really, really protect it. Given the way that Saturday's game ended for them, that loss, do you expect them to come in even more juiced up maybe than normal coming off win? I don't know if that's even a question to be asked, no. given how that game ended for no, I mean, they're going to, I would assume that whether they were an undefeated team or, or a team now with the back against the wall, that um, this stage, this opportunity, they would certainly relish it and come play to the best of their ability. I would expect nothing less. Mike, your offensive line was called for some penalties Saturday. What do you think was going on there, and how do you make sure it doesn't happen again? <laughs> um, I'm trying to make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, you know, I think I think we had a couple holding penalties early. I think one was a tough call. I think two of them we did a poor job of keeping our hands inside and our contact points. Um, we had a couple offsides late um, in the game um, that that you know weren't great, um, but those were late. Uh, and so those are just some young guys getting new reps that that we've got to get cleaned up and fixed. And so. Um, you know, obviously we'll continue to emphasize it and do the best we can to, to make sure we get it out of there. It's really the first time, you know, we, we had the pre-snap penalties early. I think we got rid of a lot of the pre-snap penalties. It's the first time we've had a lot of in-action penalties called, and, and those are sometimes a little bit easier to deal with because at least the kids are, are fighting and scrapping, but, um, you know, we got to do a better job with our hand technique and our hand placement. Yeah, I think it's a completely different offense that's going to, you know, I, I think 
what you're always trying to do is is figure out, you know, what is the quarterback looking at, what is he seeing, and how can you make him uncomfortable in some way, shape, or form. And a lot of that is dictated by the offense. And so, you know, running the RPO style, he was running at Wake, created one set of reads, running a more pro-style system like he's running now at Notre Dame creates another set of, of challenges. And so, um, you know, I, I listen, you, could, you can be living in a – cardboard box somewhere and know that Sam Hartman's a really talented quarterback in the college level and so you know experience or knowing him he's really good and so we're gonna have to figure out how to control him as best we can. Coach how important in a game of this magnitude I think you mentioned earlier about keeping players fresh but in a game of this magnitude having that type of veteran leadership in this type of environment on Saturday. Yeah I, I do think that's really important and we talked about that going into the Clemson game I think experience matters and and guys that that have been through a lot of college football and played a lot of college football there's less you can throw at them that they haven't seen there's less things that can rattle them uh it's easier to make in-game adjustments because they've been through it all before and so um i do think experience matters now this is a game where they've got a ton too and so they've got a lot of experience on their side of the ball they're almost as old as we are and so I don't know that we have any type of experience edge, but it certainly makes me feel better that we've got an experienced team to handle this type of situation. Uh, Jenna Coleman got his first reps of the season, but another couple of guys with injuries. Any updates heading into this weekend from guys that may have been out last weekend? No, I don't. I don't know. I don't even think about those things. Miles Jones should be back. You know, he just had a, a minor, a minor deal um, that we held him out, kind of precautionary. Um, I don't know who else you want, who else you're asking about. It's probably not Pickett's probably still. Oh yeah, no Pickett practice today. Okay. Yeah, we hope to have Pickett back. Sorry, yeah, again, I don't really spend a lot of time. Yeah, Pickett Pickett's back. Um, he'll he'll be. It'll just kind of be how quick we can get him reacclimated this week. But he was out there and had a full practice today, and so um, there's a shot we have him available Saturday night. With your coaching background, what impresses you the most defensively that Notre Dame is doing right now? Because they they look so impressive. Uh, not allowing people to score points is, is in my simple-minded way, the most important thing. No, I, I mean, I think they have a very firm grasp of what they're trying to do. I, I think they, um, they're able to, to execute their system at a high level. You don't see a lot of busts. You don't see a lot of bad leverage plays. You don't look at the formation cut-ups and see a lot of things that you can attack because they have great leverage and how they set edges and set formations. And so I just think they are running a really, really solid sound scheme uh, with a bunch of kids who know exactly what they're trying to do and are executing at a really high level. And what that does is it forces you on offense to, to consistently win and that we've talked about that a lot from our perspective. That's a really hard thing for offenses to do in the college game. And so, um, you know, they don't give you anything. You have to earn everything. And so um, we're going to have to come out and have a really complete performance on Saturday night. Coach, you guys are fourth in the country in passing yards allowed. What has been some of the keys to that drastic system score improvement from last year? Um, yeah, I think it's it's been a combination of two things. I think it's been, you know, second year in the system and some development of the guys that, that we had that were really talented players that I think have elevated their game. If you look at Brandon Johnson, if you look at Chandler Rivers, if you look at Jalen Stinson, um, if you look at even a Josh Pickett and the opportunities that he gets out there, um, I think those guys are playing football at a much better level this year than they were last year. And then I think we've added four key contributors to that group you know miles jones al blades are playing corner at a really really high level uh jeremiah lewis has been really really good for us at safety and then um flipping terry moore from running back to safety has had a huge impact and so i think you know we had four guys coming back that have all elevated and are playing at a better level and then we added four guys into that competition mix and so i think you've got eight guys right now that we feel really really comfortable putting on the field and so that's that's kind of where that's come from how impressive has it been for your, you know, you see the improvement from Brandon Johnson this year from his ability. You kind of remind you like an old school Bob Sanders for the Colts where he, he can blitz the pass rusher and also play secondary. Like, but what's been so impressive? From his standpoint this year. Yeah, he's a playmaker. I think that's the thing that jumps out, and that's what we talk about all the time in our defensive staff room is how do we put him in positions to impact the game. And, you know, for, for his size and, and who he is, you would expect him to just have to be a cover guy, and that's not him at all. I mean, he's an elite blitzer. 
Uh, he's really wiggly. He's really electric and how he can put his foot in the ground and change direction. And so he becomes really hard to block. He's had more wins against offensive linemen than a nickel blitzer that I've ever coached. And so that's, that's really impressive. And then he's been really good outside in the perimeter for us. He's had a handful of TFLs on, on perimeter screens the last couple of weeks. And, um, and so he just continues to find ways to impact the game. He's a really talented player. We're lucky to have him. You've covered a lot of ground. But still, this is extended. You know, you have a chance to be seen by a lot of people. What is the one thing you hope people take away from watching all this about Duke football? Oh, I don't know. They could take away whatever they want. I, I hope they see that um, Duke football is a product worth getting behind. I hope they see that, that Duke football is a product worth rallying around. I probably care more about the opinions of our fan base and the people in this triangle and the people in this state. Um, you know, that this is a program worth supporting and it's not going anywhere. And we're building a foundation right now and, and we're just starting to scratch the surface of what we're capable of being. And now's the time. Now's the time to get on board and get behind this team because these kids certainly deserve it. They work extremely hard and they represent this program and this university the right way. Saturday night, sold out event, primetime ESPN. What is your message to the fans? Be there. Be there in blue. Be loud. Uh, students, get there early. We need all of you. We need every student on this campus to get out there and, and be part of this thing. Uh, and let's make this a true college football home environment. And let's make this something that um, becomes a staple of what Duke football represents. Great. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Appreciate Thanks, Coach.